Welcome back, storytellers, to the Garlic Marketing Show, brought to you by StoryCruise.com, the ultimate resource for finding videographers and editors that know marketing, that can make you money, so you're not throwing your money out the window on video that doesn't work. Today, we're going to talk SEO again, search engine optimization, because it's a crucial topic. I think that everyone can keep learning about it, because your clients are looking for answers. And I've got an SEO expert, a great friend, David Finberg of Pete's Digital Marketing. David, thank you so much for being on. Hey, thanks so much, Ian. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, um, and we're going to talk SEO. At the end, he's going to give us some serious SEO tips, what you can be doing in-house, in your office right now to be creating some really highly quality, high search intense converting uh, content that can get ranked and how to get ranked better. But... Before we get into that, David, so tell me, you know, what are the trends now lockdowns happening? I think it's probably getting more competitive. People might, might think SEO is a waste of time or too expensive. What, what types of trends are you seeing right now in search? So, so there's a lot of uh, exciting things happening in search right now. You know, Google's testing out some new features, right, where um, it's actually highlighting sections of video, highlighting you know, snippets of content within articles to help users really find uh, information, you know, more rapidly, more quickly. Um, but as a whole, uh, in general, you know, people are spending a lot more time on the computer, right? We're not going out as much. We're, um, you know, self-quarantining or, or taking, you know, limited time outside. And you know, what that is kind of correlated to is, is some real um, interesting uh, increases in certain niches and markets. Uh, another thing that we've been seeing is that, you know, while we are in a pandemic and, you know, as, as owners, as, as people who, you know, are, are focused on growing um, and, and, you know, expanding business and, and getting more visibility, uh, you know, we also need to understand that, that this is a time where uh, some people have panicked, right? And so um, they say, hey, you know, you need to take, take a scalpel to your marketing budget, not a cleaver, right? And we've actually seen a couple, um, couple of uh, brands in different industries, right? Taking more of a cleaver approach, which is actually opening up some of the doors to, um, to new kind of uh, individuals, new thought leaders in the marketplace popping up. You know, SEO is a marathon, not a sprint. So, you know, I, I don't want you guys to get discouraged and think, well, you know, there's so many things. Yes, SEO is constantly changing, right? We're seeing some new trends, um, but it's never too late to just start diving in and, and, and you know, capitalizing on some of the things that, are happening in the industry, especially with, you know, different um, shifts that we're seeing in the market with people kind of pivoting their marketing budgets. Yeah, it is, it is interesting you say that the scalpel and the cleaver, I mean, we're now, you know, we're recording this in August and it's, you know, it's new home sales, everything is kind of through the roof. And it, it's amazing. I remember at the beginning, I was telling people, this is your opportunity, this is your opportunity. And very few people took advantage of it. In fact, a lot of people stepped back and now, boom, there was market share to be taken. Um, but like you said, there's still opportunity. But what are some of, the, you know, specifically, what are some of the things that you saw happen that were real big shifts that uh, affected your clients, helped your clients out? A big shift was we saw people, you know, speaking of taking that scalper versus cleaver, right, turn off all their paid ads. Right. Or in some cases, maybe they're reducing their SEO budget down to half of what it was. Right? It's the people that can consist, stay consistent, that are consistently improving their site, adding content, adding backlinks. Right. A step forward is a step forward. Right. And a step back is a step back, obviously. So, you know, what we, we saw was a, a lot of uh, a lot of openings in the market, a lot of opportunities. We also saw. Um, differences in the way that people are marketing. Right. Um, for example, we had a, you know, uh, vacation rental company, right, where they, they basically have uh, uh, homes around the United States, specifically in Scottsdale, um, where they were seeing, oh, well, we've got a lot of, of people, you know, searching, but not a lot of conversion right now, right? Like there was, uh, you know, the lockdown, especially in Arizona, was pretty, pretty heavy and people couldn't go out. They couldn't go out to eat. They couldn't travel. Um, and so what we did is we, we said, okay, well, people, you know, there are different stages of that buying cycle, right? And it can sometimes take, you know, six, seven different touch points until your customers, um, you know, either remember your brand or trust your brand enough to opt in or take an action. And so 
this is a great opportunity right now to focus a little bit more on that discovery based content, right? Adding value for people who may not be ready to buy this second, right? But start educating them around the process. It's kind of like finding water in a desert, right? Um, you find that water in the desert, next time you're thirsty, you're going to go back to that water. And so, you know, if it takes six to seven touch points and we're, we're in, you know, uh, a time of, of, you know, we're kind of like pioneers right now. No, no one's, you know, run businesses through these large scale pandemics, at least in, in recent years and uh, especially not without the internet. So, you know, I would focus on creating an informative content, right? That really appeals to kind of the discovery phase of, um, of your buying cycle, right? Don't go straight for the jugular, don't go for the sale, right? It, it, it's, uh, uh, it's something that you can kind of nurture that lead and warm them up so that as the market comes back, as cities reopen, as more people are comfortable, you know, spending money and going out and, you know, jobs are at back to the economy, um, you know, and for the people that inherently are, you know, just doing the research and planning something and have the, the means to, uh, to really take action, right? Having some of that more nurturing discovery, really just thought leadership content, right? Is effectively the water in the desert that um, regardless of where they're at, they're going to, they're always going to remember that and come back to you. At least that's what we tend to see uh, when you compare that with like some retargeting or you have, you know, basically low level campaigns that you don't have to spend a lot of money on, but that can, you know, really move the needle quite a bit. Nice. And can you give like a specific example of one you see working maybe like in medicine? For sure. So in medicine, um, you know, what we basically specialize, uh, 50% of our business is just in medical SEO. Medical SEO has very specific algorithms that are different from your traditional, um, you know, home services or business to business service type stuff. These kinds of services can affect your money or your life. So it's very important to have what they call expertise, trust, authoritativeness. It's called the EAT algorithm. So what we see in medical science uh, that's working really well is um, referencing studies, referencing uh, publications that maybe you would even read during your residency or during times that, that you're studying for a test, right? Having actually concrete, um, highly authoritative medical studies, whether that's from Harvard or from other sites, right, that can uh, really reinforce kind of the topic. For example, uh, we work with a teen treatment center called Polaris Teen Center. Um, they basically do mental health treatment for teenagers, right? Really bad bipolar, depression. So on some of those pages, we actually have resources linking out to really relevant authoritative stuff um, that will help increase that trust and help increase that expertise. Um, it's not going to make or, or break it, but it can certainly make the difference when you're trying to outrank someone who doesn't have these things, right? And, you know, it doesn't take a lot to... to back up a statement with, uh, with a link to, to the source or statistic, right? That's, that's done using a, a, a study that was, you know, uh, really carried out correctly, right? As opposed to what you can find just, you know, everyone's got the joke, oh, did you read it on the internet, right? That's kind of what we want to get away from, right? How do we reinforce some of the more authoritative content? Um, link your brand to those kinds of sites, gives Google that context of, wow, they're really attempting to provide the best information and the most fair and balanced information. So that's a big one right now where, you know, really adding in those sources, um, creating content that uh, is balanced, right? And, and really, you know, if, especially if you're talking about a medical condition, right? There's so many different um, avenues and, and kind of alleyways that you have to navigate just like you would with a client, right? And those same principles can be applied online to help boost the trust and authoritativeness. Um, another thing that we're seeing as well is just having quality reviews, right? What happens when you search your brand name, right? Having a good review system uh, is, is, you know, kind of the icing on the cake when you start to incorporate some of these other, uh, other more granular measures as well. Yeah. I mean, reviews, I mean, it's, it's crucial. It's crucial and it's, it should be part of anyone's campaigns, anyone's right. And it's amazing how many people I talk to, I'm like, are you asking for reviews? They're like, eh. You know, it's like, yeah, kind of. I'm like, that should be because everyone's, no matter what, they're going to look you up and those reviews are important and it's going to increase your conversion rate or decrease it if you don't have them. Uh, but, you know, when you're speaking of um, 
you know, outs, you know, linking out the authoritative content. One of the things I always talk about is like not linking too much. Is there too much linking out for authoritative content? I mean, should you be putting a whole list of Wikipedia links on a page? That's a, that's an incredibly important question. And one that, um, that I'd be happy to answer. So you don't want to go overboard, right? You want to have, you know, just a few sources. What are the, what's the main um, takeaway from the article? And you basically want supporting information that, uh, you know, you want information that supports that main takeaway, right? So, you know, does it help to have, uh, you know, there is a decreasing rate of return, right? You, you want to add a couple, you want to think about is if you were a user, would you be interested in some of these topics, right? Um, it's all about creating that compelling user experience, right? They might click on that page for just a second and be like, wow, this is great. I found what I wanted. I'm going back to the article, right? Um, but one thing to pay attention to as well is when you're doing those external links, you want to open those in a new window. So whether you're on WordPress or Shopify or Magento or, you know, choose your platform, make sure that you're not actually encouraging them to bounce away from your site because that can actually hurt uh, your overall uh, metrics that Google's measuring in terms of people dwelling on your site and finding what they need and not hitting the back button, all those kinds of, of things or signals. And so uh, opening it in a new window and, and exactly right, we don't want to overdo it, right? Two to three links on an article is more than enough. One really solid one is, is perfect as well. That's, yeah, great information. And, you know, um, obviously I'm beginning the video. How are you seeing video affect the ranking of a website? So video has a profound impact, uh, especially in competitive markets, medical, medicine, lawyers, right? Anything that um, is, is, you know, ultra, uh, ultra competitive, just in the sense of a lot of people are searching for it. You need ways to differentiate your brand. Um, and Google, actually, if you were to take two pages, right, one with a video, one without a video, they both had a really compelling content, both linking out to external websites. The one with the video is always going to do better. And it's comes down to this, right? People want more ways to consume information. Um, video has a higher retention rate oftentimes than people just kind of reading through that text, right? We want convenience, we want speed. Um, having that video is just another great way to help your user experience um, and also reinforce the copy as, you know, I've caught myself doing it, right? Sometimes we just scan through the headings and we're, we're in a rush, right? We just want to find that piece of information, right? having that video front and center, maybe halfway down the page after you've kind of introduced them to a couple of points, uh, not only is great for your user experience, which helps your SEO, right? It helps people stay on your site longer, um, but Google actually, you know, as many of you may know, Google bought YouTube, and I believe that there are some ranking signals that Google's um, implemented for people that go ahead and place YouTube videos on their web page. And that's what I was going to ask you. What are you seeing is, you know, because I, I know a lot of people don't like putting YouTube. I always suggest putting the YouTube video on unless there's a very specific reason that you don't want to, like you're gating the content, preventing people from seeing the content. But um, uh, have you noticed anything? What, what do you usually do as best practice on your sites is adding what type of video player? So there's some, you know, most cases, this kind of comes back to the speed of your site, right? Having a video above the fold in some cases, especially we're on mobile, right? As 5G rolls out, this will be less of an issue, but the loading time is important, right? And so some people are afraid to put, actually go and put videos because they think, oh, this is going to slow down my site, right? I'm, 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 the Google gods are going to get mad at me. It's actually <laughs> reversed, right? Google likes to see video. They, they think it adds to the user experience. Um, but it is important that if you want to have that video, can you have it above the fold? Yes. Um, but it tends to have a better speed score if you place it below the fold. So, um, yes, you should be having videos. It, they don't have to be, you know, 10 minute videos, right? They can be short, concise to the point. Um, they could be, you know, a, a mix of, of, you know, something a little bit more long form, concise down. Uh, you know, there's a million ways to do it as, you know, Ask, a, ask Ian for any recommendations. <laughs> uh, but in general, you're definitely, uh, you know, it's an advantage to have. It's so important that actually all the most popular SEO tools like Ahrefs, SEMrush, Moz, they're all uh, actually when they do competitive scans, they, they actually, there's a box that says, do you have a video on your page? And so we've seen as much as a 10% increase just from popping a video on there, you know, and those results may vary, right? I can't guarantee that yeah. 10% because there's so many different variables. Um, but when you're, when you're Google's comparing competitive niche, right, you're going to say, okay, you know, it's looking for the site that has the video and usually the sites with the videos, uh, consistently rank higher. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, it, you know, it increases conversion. There's a lot of reasons. And, and then if you are a lawyer or a doctor, it, I mean, just from the standpoint of someone seeing your face and hearing your voice, it's going to help increase conversion when someone walks in the office. Um, but now, you know, and speaking of conversion and value, what are the metrics that you see for investing in SEO? Like what is the, you know, because we, we kind of make that jump like, okay, you know, if you get higher rankings, you get higher traffic, we know you're going to become the authority, but what metrics are you seeing as far as how it's changing businesses to be ranking higher? And as far as like money wise content or money traffic, not just traffic, but client wise. You know, there's, there's two things that you can kind of measure, right? Like your notoriety in the industry. And then of course, like the ROI of the campaign and like how much um, money's been made. You know, we've seen brands that started out getting five customers a month, right? Weren't doing a lot of SEO, had maybe even no SEO, um, all the way to going and partnering up and getting like American Express as a client, right? And like 10 xing their business. And I don't like to use that term. I think for someone who's already engaging in SEO, right? A 2x or a 3x is probably more, um, more of that conservative estimate that you're going to start with. But if you can 2 to 3x every single year, Right, you can go from you know making twenty grand online in a year all the way to making two hundred or two million, and so it's a marathon, not a sprint. Right, the, the the quicker you start, the better off you'll be in the future. Right, I don't know about you, but this year has flown by for us, and it's yeah. <laughs> quickly time flies. So it's just you know whether you're doing it in house or you're hiring a firm, like taking some action it doesn't have to be you know the whole enchilada all at once. Uh, but, you know, just consistently kind of moving through those motions is, is certainly something to consider when you start to think about the exponential returns. I mean, this is the heyday of SEO. It's the heyday of online marketing, YouTube marketing, right? As bigger brands get in this space and as the, the space becomes more competitive over the next, you know, 20, 30 years, right? The, these costs of acquisitions is of someone spending, you know, uh, for example, maybe four or five grand a month to make a million dollars after two years of SEO like that, I don't know if it's going to go away, but it's certainly not going to become any easier. Right. And, nope. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't like to throw numbers out there, but that's, that's really what's possible. It does depend on your niche. Right. But it, it depends yeah. on if you can handle that, you know, once we get the leads, are we closing them? Right. And can we handle that? And so, you know, we're here to help with different systems and processes and there's a lot of resources online that you can look at to, to help with that as well. Yeah. And I mean, I remember when I first got into marketing for attorneys, you know, 12 years ago, thir now 13 years ago, um, when I, when I was 12, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, that they, you know, it, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm only 25. Um, but, uh, but when they, when I got into it, you know, people would push back and go $2,500 a month to get me to the first page of Google. And they'd be like, Oh my God, in New York city. And now it's like, that, that costs you 20 grand and, and a month and it's not even guaranteed. And I think you're right. It's like now is the time, especially as people have pulled back, you really can go in there and take advantage of this and invest for the long run. That's one thing I love about SEO is, I mean, if you do it right, if you don't, you know, that's why I wanted to have you on too is because I don't like people that take shortcuts and you're doing it the right way. It's, it's an investment. It is more of an investment than any, almost any other type of advertising. That's why I love video and I love SEO because it's like you have these long-term benefits. Yeah, you might spend $120,000 a year with David for two, three years, but you're going to have a $3 million return. If I told, and you know, it, right now everyone's like looking at the stock market, looking at the stock market. I'm like, if I told you you put $60,000 in Apple stock this year and in two years it was going to be worth $600,000, you would go beg, borrow, and steal for that. <laughs> That's right. That's right. It's, it's literally what's, what's possible, right? And, and it, it, it doesn't matter where you start. You know, you can start at 2,500. You can start at five. You can start anywhere. It's just like you said, right? You look at AdWords. You look at Facebook. When AdWords came out in 2000, cost per click was like 90 cents. Right? <laughs> now it's like for lawyers and medical, you know, medical niches can be 50, a hundred dollars a click. Right. And just yeah. like, you know, right. It's, Hey, if you, if you can put in a dollar and get back four or five or, you know, double the money, wh whatever you can do that, that makes sense uh, is, is certainly worth it. And, you know, in the scheme of things, you know, it might take a year to really get moving, 
right? It might take two years to, to rank at the top of your market for all the terms you want. Uh, that said, you know, especially in times like these, when, when, you know, it becomes a necessity, the rate of return is, is, is pretty ridiculous. It's not limited to any specific niche. You know, as long as you have quality content and you can get the traffic, you know, the people are out there. Yep. 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 And it, it is. And I want to talk about quality content in a second, but um, you know, when it comes to uh, you know, knowledge of SEO and having basic knowledge, because it used to be that people would, you know, just be like, I don't want to know about it. Just do it for me. How important do you think it is for a business leader, a business person to have a basic understanding of search engines? It's, it's extremely important. And, you know, and it's a, it's a buy, you know, take that with a grain of salt. I'm an SEO guy. I'm always going to say that, but you know, what I see is, um, leadership teams and high level executives, whether you're, you know, a business that does 500 million or you're a business that does 500,000. Um, looking at the mistakes that are made, it, it's usually um, not an intentional mistake. It's either a lack of, of knowledge, right? Maybe um, not having that communication link between the web development team or the, your SEO team and the leaders of the business who are actually kind of steering that ship. So simple things like we want to redesign a website. Um, hey, we want to set up a new page or hey, we're going to change the layout of a page, right? These things can all adversely or conversely really help your SEO if done right. You know, if you, if you do it right, it can be double the traffic. If you do it incorrect, you can lose everything and have to start from, from you know, reinstate the old page, right? Not start from square one in a sense, but like in this example, let's say we launched a new page, right? We might have to revert that page back if it's not actually making more dollars for the business or, or getting more visibility. And so, you know, that's really where, um, you know, I think, I think our team shines is, is going in and providing someone with the resources and or the consulting and expertise to be able to say, hey, you know, whether you're going to do it in-house, you, you have a firm or um, you're, you're just getting started, you know, thinking about the process of making sure that whenever a website updates made or as we're, you know, looking at, at maybe reinventing some of our SEO uh, or reinventing our brand, you know, making sure that there's someone in there keeping an eye on that stuff. Um, the worst thing you can imagine is when you go and you spend money on a brand new website, it, you know, that process alone can, you know, take a month or two to, to really get dialed in and get it exactly the way you want. And you launch that site and now you've got this store with no like sign on it, right? No one's finding you, your rankings have dropped. It's really frustrating for business owners um, and for executives who are trying to launch new initiatives or, hey, we wanted to launch this new website. And, yeah, wow, guess what? The site looks great, but we, no one's seeing it, right? How yeah. Is that? And so yeah. um, you don't have to know the under the, the hood stuff, right? But you do need to know that, that it is a question that needs to be brought up, right? When we're making major website changes or adding new piece of content or, you know, making a change is that, you know, is there someone that you can rely on, um, or, you know, if you're more of a do it yourself or right understanding, you know, and searching, Hey, how does migrating my site, what risks can happen? Right. Well, you know, you can change your URL and if you don't put a redirect and tell Google where the new URL is, people might be clicking on broken links and there's a million different things that you can, you can dive through. But, uh, in a nutshell, you know, thinking about it at a 30,000 foot view, Right, you want some eyes on the projects that inherently are touching websites, touching content, um, you know, maybe press and, and things that that ultimately influence your visibility online, whether that's your site or other people's sites. Uh, and the more that you can just ask the questions and have the the right people in place, you don't necessarily need to become an expert in SEO, but it's certainly something that um, you know can make or break your business. If let's say your SEO is doing really good and you migrated that site, and now all of a sudden there's all these errors and you're not doing so hot anymore. You know, that um, is never a fun conversation to have. And, and it's never fun to um, have to go back and redo things after you think the project's complete. So uh, those would probably be the two scenarios I'd say are, are really strike close to home for, for a couple of, uh, of people that I know personally, which was, wow, I wish I had, had someone, you know, taking a look at this. Or I wish, I wish I asked that question to my web developer um, when I was developing the site so that he could have taken care of that or she could have taken care of that prior to us launching. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's one of the, it's like going to a hack doctor, right? You don't know that they've left the scalpel in there till you're really, really sick. 
and then you got to fix it. <laughs> I, and I've seen those nightmares. I've seen those nightmares of not only just what they've done in the website and destroyed rankings, but building bad links and taking shortcuts. And that's why you need a reputable SEO company. You need, I think every business, I mean, I personally think every business owner has to have a, at least a top level knowledge of SEO, just like a top level knowledge of finances. You don't need to know the insides and outs of your books, but you need to have that conversation with your bookkeeper and your accountant. Uh, and SEO, I mean, that's the one thing that's not going to go away anytime soon. When's the last time you didn't use Google, right? <laughs> I mean, how many times a day do we each use Google for everything? Um, uh, you know, the only thing I've lately have used probably more is Amazon. <laughs> the Alexa stuff, so, so innovative, so cool, you know, just, that's a whole nother search engine, right? That uh, you know, kind of brings us uh, into some topics around the content, which I'll, I'll, I'll kind of lead into uh, as we get there, but. Yeah, you know, let's get into that. Let's get into that. What content right now are you seeing working? What's some content things that people can easily do themselves to increase rankings, increase traffic, increase that authority that you were talking about at the top? So the, this is probably one of the most important things that isn't well known in the industry. It started to come out in 2017, 2018. People started to focus on this a little bit more, uh, but it's called searcher task accomplishment. And so what that's a fancy term for is how likely is your page to solve the user's query, right? How likely uh, is your content to kind of fill that void for the person searching? And so there are a couple of things that, that tie, this kind of ties into everything, whether you're searching on voice on Alexa or you're typing into Google on your desktop or on mobile, um, Google's really trying to identify, you know, hey, what is this content about, right? And so one thing that, you know, this is kind of like a, a marriage of classic SEO principles with, you know, classic, classic marketing, right? Which is what are those top five pain points? Like when, when someone's asking you about a product or service or, or maybe treatment, you know, what are those common questions that are being asked? Right. And I usually start with my face-to-face -face interactions, right? Hey, I know like five out of seven people have asked me the same question, right? This should inherently be on my site, whether it's in an FAQ section or maybe you even create a little, um, subparagraph that just addresses the, the specific pain point that the customer is experiencing. Um, there's a lot to be said for talking about the hero's journey, right? And how, um, you know, making the content about how it, uh, contextual to how it's going to empower your user, right? And so um, this is kind of boiled down in an SEO principle of like, we want to provide content that people are searching for that uh, maybe they don't even know that inherently they, they would have a question about at some point, but we want to present them with this information so that they really have um, what they call a high level of quality in your main content and your supporting content, right? And so you know, we studied these algorithms with Google and they're saying, hey, let's take, for example, um, you know, I I'm just going to throw out tennis rackets. I honestly don't know a ton about tennis rackets, but here's an example. <laughs> you know, you've got different kinds of grips, you've got different kinds of wire, right? There's tennis rackets for men, women, kids, right? All these different kinds of questions, right? And let's say you're a tennis racket salesperson, or maybe we should have made this, you know, about medical or, or, or some other example, but let's say you're selling tennis rackets, right? What are those five questions? What are the differences in the line and the, in the grips and the handles, right? How can you kind of convey that expertise in a way that's um, concise enough for the, for the prospective lead to, to, you know, scan through and read it? Um, so a lot of it has to do with formatting. It has to do with asking the right questions. Um, and it has to do with also just, you know, thinking about your voice queries, right? What are the best things to look for in a tennis racket, right? What's the best material for a tennis racket, right? You're thinking about all of these underlying kind of who, what, where, when, how questions, right? Related to your product or service. And then whether you're incorporating that as part of a bigger article, or you're just simply putting that at the bottom of your page and, terms of like an FAQ section. Those are the types of queries that let's say, you know, someone's voice searching, right. And they're down the block from your place. And it's like, you know, what, uh, you know, what kind of settlements do ex lawyers, you know, whatever it is, right. They're going to now have a much higher chance of your site popping up. Google's actually going to auto generate a little meta description for that question to try to get the user to click on it. And so, um, it, it could be simply boiled down to this, right? Understanding those pain points. What are the top five questions? If you don't know those top five questions, you can go on Quora, 
You can go and answer the public. You can go on forums, right? What's happening in your community? How do you stay on that cutting edge? And then how do you create some content that's contextually relevant to your service? It's kind of that mix between branding and SEO, right? We don't want to water our content down, but if we do this right, we should be answering all of the questions that someone might have and basically overcoming those objections before they even pick up the phone, right? And video helps do that. You know, video does that, content does that, FAQs do that, um, podcasts do that, right? There's all kinds of ways to kind of get that information out there. But in the context of SEO, we would want to see some written content, right, on the page, whether it's at the bottom of the page or where it makes sense, right, where, where you would expect to read it as a user. Um, that's a huge one. So, you know, take your content game to the next level. You, in a nutshell, need to understand what your market's doing. If you're an expert in the field, you probably already know 15 to 20 different questions that people consistently ask you. If um, this is a new market or maybe you're not sure um, what the latest questions, maybe you knew what the questions were, maybe there's some new ones, right? Check out Quora.com, answer the public, and just see what people search for related to your products and services. And I guarantee you, you'll find at least one or two gems where, oh, hey, maybe that would be a great topic to put on, right? And then you can throw it on a blog or throw it on your landing page and, you know, rank a little bit higher and, you know, if you can solve that search task accomplishment, what Google will just start doing is they'll start ranking you for um, a wider range of keywords as well, right? It'll start ranking you for a lot more volume of keywords. It says, you know what? Not only are they expert on tennis rackets, they're an expert on, you know, what you need to get started, the game of tennis, right? They're really looking at all of these different things where a tennis racket might affect your quality of life, right? And in the medical industry, you know, expertise, trust, authoritativeness, um, you can affect people's money, their health, their well-being, right? So it's really important to, in order to satisfy those algorithms to uh, really support your main content and prop it up with some of those follow-up questions that you get and things that, you know, people are, are uh, concerned about. Love it. Love it. And I mean, that's easy, easy content, but, and you do so much more because there's link building. Tell me about your services at, at Peaks. Tell me about what you all do so that if anyone wants to work with you, they can and who your perfect client is. Absolutely. So, you know, our clients, uh, you know, typically range in the, uh, a couple of different niches like health, uh, finance, uh, business to business services, a little bit of e-commerce and info products as well. Um, you know, we really specialize, uh, we say we're the digital Sherpas. We specialize in page one. So when we, uh, you know, approach an engagement, we were really looking at this as a long-term commitment. We really want to, uh, you know, don't want to pressure the client. So we don't have any long-term contracts. It's actually month to month. Uh, but in a nutshell, we come through and, and focus on about seven to eight core different areas. So, you know, you touched on backlinks, uh, the on-page or the, the technical markup of your website, the speed of your website, the reputation management, um, you know, the, your citations, your Google My Business, your maps, is actually a whole nother opportunity to start garnering more leads and traffic. And a second source that when optimized correctly, um, you know, you can really exponentially grow your business, both on your website and your Google My Business. Um, you know, we really take, uh, take pride in, in throwing in what we call the whole kitchen sink. We come on, we look at these seven to eight core areas, content, backlinks, on page, page speed, user experience, um, we've got a team of about seven to eight different experts who are just frac have fractionalized areas of expertise in those individual sections, right? And so that's where, you know, it really makes a lot of sense for a growing business to come and hire or outsource to a firm, right? Because we're going to come in at a fraction of what it costs to hire uh, an employee. And, you know, looking at people who hire employees is not necessarily bad, but like with an employee, you might not get backlinks, Right? You might not have a web designer and developer, but they might be really good at content, right? And so our, our whole strategy is data-driven marketing, right? Everything we do is data-driven. Got a team of fractionalized experts that come in, fix up the seven to eight areas of your site. Um, within the first couple months, right, you're going to start to see this dramatic improvement. Uh, and then, you know, really taking the stance of, uh, you know, we're, we're here to grow with you. We're, we're here to create, um, help you become... Uh, more visible in your industry, but do so in a way that's consistent with your branding. It's on message, right? It's, it's not just some SEO keywords thrown on a page, which has been another kind of pain point for a lot of people, which is, Hey, I either don't know if my SEO is working, which is where we apply the data driven solution. Um, Hey, it's working, but it really makes me sound kind of weird. Like it doesn't sound like my brand, right? Or, mm -hmm. Hey, it's not working and I don't know what to do. 
and we need someone to, to come take a look. And so, uh, you know, that's in, a, in, a, in an elevator pitch kind of uh, uh, our, our spiel, right? We'll come in, we'll, we'll, we'll really hit the ground running, throwing everything but the kitchen sink, basically. And, uh, you know, ideal clients are, are people who, you know, have high ticket products and services um, or mid-tier ticket products and services that, you know, you know have, a, have a team behind them and, and, you know, are looking to grow and take things, you know, beyond that initial plateau or take it to the next level. Love it. Love it. And you can go to, uh, what's the best way to get in touch with you? PeaksDigitalMarketing.com? Yeah, feel free to visit PeaksDigitalMarketing.com. Um, you can shoot us a ping on Facebook as well uh, under Peaks Digital Marketing or, you know, shoot us a contact form, give us a call. Um, you know, I tell people call, text, email, smoke signal, and we'll, we'll get, get you figured out. But, uh, I appreciate what's the, it. And what's the best way to follow you? Where should we get in touch with you? Facebook, LinkedIn, where are you most active? I'd say I'm most active on Facebook and LinkedIn. So my Facebook's just David Finberg. Uh, I think the, the URL is David Finberg SEO expert or something like that on Facebook. And then uh, LinkedIn, again, David Finberg, you just search David Finberg peaks. I should be the first one in either way, any way you search, you should, you should be able to see me there. But uh, LinkedIn, Facebook's great. You can try to try to tweet me, but I'm not a, not a big <laughs> fan. I, I, yeah, I'd be surprised if people tweet you. Uh, not you in general, just use Twitter. <laughs> um, I mean, there's some people using it. No offense. I use it once in a while, but uh, no offense to Twitter. I still love you, Twitter. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, we'll put all the links down below. If you're watching this on YouTube, the links will be down below, um, as well as links to get in touch with them, links to websites and links to some cool articles, we'll link to everything and anything. If you're watching, if you're listening to this on your podcast, you can just click on the image, it'll flip over. There'll be links to get in touch with David. But Mr. David Finberg, thank you so much for being on the Garlic Marketing Show. Pleasure, man. I'm super grateful to, uh, to have the opportunity to be on. And, uh, you know, thanks so much. And, you know, I hope uh, you know, everyone got a, a couple of gems. And if you feel like you did, or if you have any questions, feel free. You can also drop me an email, david at peaksdigital.com. And I'll find a, a way to, to get you the answers you need. But uh, appreciate awesome. it so much. Awesome. Thank you. And thank you all so much for listening and watching us on the Garlic Marketing Show. It's been Ian Garlic and the Garlic Marketing Show brought to you by storycruise.com.